here. Uh, we did forget a comma on the uh, on the poster, so we apologize for that. But uh, Philip is someone I see as uh, kind of the future of hardware. Someone who started in software, coming over to the hardware space. Uh, really interesting stuff happening there because. Hardware has been the same for a very long time, and there's a lot of new methods coming in, especially from the software world, things like uh, uh, methods and uh, efficiencies that can be brought in. So Philip's going to be talking about some of that. Please welcome Philip to the stage. Hi. So a while ago, some two years or so, I started working on a little pet project. I wanted to build my own little processor, just from basic resistors, transistors, and capacitors. And very early on, I ran into some things that were kind of annoying, and I think that were already solved by VHDL, but I tried to take a little different approach to trying to solve those annoying things as well. So this is a small, a very small part of my processor. This basically lets me add two bits together. And don't worry, you don't have to understand it. It's not really messy, but it's kind of hard to read, right? So there's some copy-paste going on here. There's lots of wires crossing and so on. And I really hate copy-paste when I develop software. Whenever I do copy-paste, I feel like, okay, I should really do, I should really pull that out into some method, into some object or something. So the good thing is I didn't actually uh, draw all of this out. Instead, I draw, drew something else. Namely, instead of this, I did this. So. This is basically what you would find in an electrical engineering textbook or in a computer science course. These are the basic grades, XORs, ORs, NANDs, and so on. And Eagle, and as far as I know, KiCad also don't really have good support for this. So I started writing some Python code, some scripts, and so on, and basically I defined the single gates that I use, and NANDs, in individual circuits, and I did the same for board files. And then I had a little script which transforms this into this. So these are my own library components. I run a script, and I get this. This is kind of neat for the schematics, but it's also really nice for the circuit boards, because this is what this would look like as a board, and after I run the script, it looks like this. So if I would do this by hand, these are 150 components, 90 resistors, 60 transistors, 126 different nets, and if you know Eagle, they would all start up line down on the side, and you need to sort out where to place them. So that was my first step to trying to make this huge thing of building a CPU somewhat manageable. And this helps a lot with trying to fix copy-paste errors. For example, if in here I need to change the pull-up red resistors on the XOR to some different values, I just need to change one file, and then it gets automatically generated. This doesn't help with logic errors. The whole thing has 12 inputs, six outputs, lots of internal things, and those, basically there's 4,000 different combinations of input that I can have to generate the output. That's not something that I want to keep in my mind. So I'm not sure how many here are software developers or how many know, people know this comic. It's about how as a software developer you have to build up this huge model of interaction in your head, and if I change this, this means this depends on that, and then I have to take care of that side effect, and so on. I see where this is going. I don't always agree with it, because for me, I write tests. 
tests help me offload all that complexity. I don't have to worry about side effects. I don't have to worry if I change this, what might break. If there's something important that might break, there should be a test for that. And I try to do the same for my schematics. So here we have a test for an XOR. If A is low, B is high, then the output should be high. This basically, it takes an Eagle schematic as an input, creates a SPICE simulation, runs a simulation for a while, and then checks the output. And this can be done for all the gates. So single gates are easy. It's an AND has two, input, one, two inputs, one output. That's basically four combinations that you need to test. Then you add another test that it doesn't draw too much current so that there's no short circuit and so on. And then you can be fairly certain that the end in itself will work. This is especially nice for stuff like if the input is four volts, will the output still be somewhere registrable as high or will it be somewhere around 2.1 volt or so. So this basically is my design philosophy to keep to keep this whole kind of vast input space, the 4,000 different inputs in check. I don't need to worry if I break something. If I take a break for three months and come back to my project, I can start working on it without directly needing to get into the whole problem space. I can just try and say, oh yeah, that's where I left off. Let's do something. Okay, I broke something. Let's see which particular test is failing. So that's my philosophy for this. If there isn't a test, it doesn't matter. So I really need to write lots of tests. At the moment, I only have, I don't know, maybe 120 tests or so. But this will probably increase quite by quite a lot. So one other really cool thing is these tests, I can run, run both against a spy simulation and against real hardware. So once I've got my board, I've sent it off to a fab house, got it back, and then I somehow soldered on those 150 components. I can plug it in, can connect an Arduino, and run the same tests that I used during the development, which tell me, okay, the logic works against the board. At that point, I sometimes discover, yeah, I, my assumptions were wrong, the simulation didn't take into account the trace resistance, didn't take into account capacitance or so, or I discover, yeah, I made a mistake when assembling the board, which is quite nice and it's often actually fairly easy to see what kind of problem I had. If I expect a voltage of 4.5 volt and I get 3.8, it's probably that the simulation wasn't accurate. If I expect 4.5 and I get zero, there might be a problem with the board. So this basically, this is a lot of scripts, a lot of stuff, so this is how my workflow would look like. I have single gates and I have the schematic where I just use these abstract gates. I need to test the individual gates, combine them, then I can run an ERC, electrical rule check on them, then I can run tests against this. Tests like, does one plus one make two? Does A compared to, uh, does one compared to one equal equals? And create board files, and then there's a normal development process. One nice thing about this is, all this can be automated. So I have a little program, which is fairly common in software development world, called a continuous integration server. And whenever I commit something to my Git repository, it automatically runs a test, replaces the gates, runs tests again, runs electrical rule check, and so on. And if I made a mistake, I get a red message popping up saying, hey, you broke something. So basically, I don't have to worry about anything at all. I work on my board committed to Git, and then I get either green light or red light. I can continue working, and it, if I do something wrong, it will tell me, hey, this one broke. Now you, the output of your XOR is wrong. 
fix that. And later on, I could also use this to run against the populated board, but that, since I need to solder on the board and so on, doesn't make sense to automate that at the moment. So this is a very specific workflow. And one reason why I really wanted to give this talk is because this isn't really what I want to do. I don't want to have to write Python script and glue Spice and Python and other things together. I think there's a lot of potential for tools, especially open source tools like Keycard, to incorporate new ways of developing. If you look, look on the internet, there have been lots of questions asked, how in Keycard can I copy one circuit and use it twice? Well, you can copy paste it, that's okay. But I really think there can be a better way to do this. And if you look at the development over the last 10 years or so, or 15 years, software development has done a lot of, has tried a lot of different methods, tried a lot of different tools. Development boards also have gone from stuff basically plug in in your breadboard to Arduino to Trinkets to lots of things that make it easier. But board design or circuit or schematic design, that's still pretty much take components, place them, draw connections, and yeah, that's it. So I feel I don't have the answers, but I have some problems that I noticed. So I kind of got this modules working for me. I kind of got the test working for me. One thing that really doesn't work at the moment is this auto-placement of the components. So this one works beautifully. You can just connect, and even if you let the auto-router run, it will produce a board. Maybe not the nicest board, but it will work. But if you work with the abstract components, like I did with the schematic, then, yeah, there's no way to connect it. So one thing that would be really cool would be a way to have basically these components and then be able to modify them. But if you update the basic component, the modification would be transferred. I don't know how this will work yet. But I know that I would really want to have something like this work. Um, also, at the moment, I build these components and these library parts by hand. That, I can automate that, but if someone really wants to tackle this problem, that might also be a good thing to do to reduce problems of mismatched signal names, mismatched location of pads, and so on. There are some other things. For example, currently, neither Eagle or KeyCut are really good to run them automated on a continuous integration server. If you want to run the digital, uh, the design rule check with Eagle, you need to click stuff. You can't just give it a command line, uh, command and then run it automatically. That doesn't work if I want to do that every time I check in a Git repo. It's the same was at least a while ago, the, it was the same for uh, KeyCut and the automatic exporting to Spice. That only worked if you clicked a button and you couldn't do it automatically. And I'm fairly certain there's lots more. And so again, what I really want to do with this talk is basically start a discussion and try to get input from you, from anyone, on what can be done, what I might not be aware of, and yeah, how we can bring electronic design, ele circuit drawing, board spinning to a bit more modern methods. So this is on, this is a CPU, it's on Hackett.io. At the moment, fairly sparse documentation, but feel free to give me some comments if you need to some help understanding stuff. Thank you.